is Bill for Sparky Channel. A couple days ago, I got a call that a bath fan had stopped working. Here, I've flipped on the switch that turns on the fan, and it is just humming. Not working, just humming. And I told the people, yeah, I could fix that, not a problem. Now, when a bath fan isn't working, the first thing you want to check is the wiring. You look for loose wires, broken wires, wires which the insulation has been worn off. When there's a, a plug, you make sure that the plug's plugged in all the way. And the fan needs to be served with proper voltage. If all those things are okay and the bath fan just isn't working, the next thing to check is the electrical motor that runs the fan. And if the fan body and so forth is in good shape, it's not broken or anything, then a new motor should fix the problem. Take the cover down, then squeeze the springs on both sides and it should come right off. Here's what the springs look like. Now I'll pull out the three prong plug. You're probably noticing that this fan has a different configuration than most bath fans. This is a Newtone LS 80SE. It was purchased at Home Depot in the early 90s. You only need to remove one fastener to take this unit down. It's right where the arrow is, and it is a Phillips or a quarter inch hex. And here it comes. There's the unit. This is the inside of the metal box that the fan goes in. And you see those two little nubs there where the arrow is. That's where the fan rests on that side. And then the other side, it has that one fastener that you saw me just take off. Note that this is a four inch discharge. And this fan is meant for eight inch rafters. That's all important information if you were going to buy a new one. This is the blower that came out of my unit and it differs from a lot of bath fans in that a lot of bath fans have ventilation fans as opposed to blowers. So let's take a look at the motor on this blower. The arrow is pointing to the stator of the motor and what I noticed right away is that it is very rusty. Now this isn't necessarily a sign that your motor is bad but it is a red flag. Now the arrow is pointing towards the axial fan blades, which should be able to spin freely, but they can't. The motor is really just about seized, and it's very difficult to spin the axial fan blades at all. So we need a new motor. So I shopped around, and I found this motor for $70 on Amazon, and they actually delivered it in less than 24 hours. If you think that's a bad price, the price for the whole blower is $199. <laughs> First, I'll remove the metal top. There's five screws, and they are quarter inch hex or Phillips, and you take off these five screws, and you'll be able to lift the motor and fan right out. Now remove two bolts, which are two inches long, and they have a quarter inch head. Now I'm ready to remove the stator from the rotor. The stator is the rusty part. There it is. There's a stator right there. And uh, just checking it out. The reason I removed the stator was to give myself access to this clip. This clip helps to hold the shaft of the motor to the blower wheel. Put your pliers right in here to get that clip loose. The rotor is the part that moves, and when this moves, the fan goes around. So we have the clip off now, and what I'm going to do first is, you see there's a little metal sticking out here, I'm just going to see if I can't start it. Yeah, see it went down just a smidgen there, uh, hitting it, uh, that's to get it started. Now I'm going to grab the rotor, this is the rotor, 
Okay, you grab it real good. And I'm gonna turn the fan. There we go, there we go. Okay, it's come off a little bit, a little more. Maybe we'll go back and forth, there it goes. Okay, so the shaft is out of the fan. By the way, you may be able to buy a new blower fan for your model for perhaps 10 to $20 online. So now we have a new motor. So take these nuts off right here. That's how you're going to be fastening the motor to the assembly. So it goes on like that. And we're going to put the nuts on. Gotta take this clip off the old shaft. Just put it on just like that. And now we're gonna put on the fan onto the shaft. It's got a flat portion right here. It goes the flat portion goes right over here. So just put it in just like that. Okay, so now you got to get this clip on. And you can see that I did get the clip into place. Okay, so here's the housing right here. And this goes like this. The screws go back through the face into the body of the fan. Tighten all the screws, nice and tight. This yellow wire with the green stripe uh, attaches to the metal body of the uh, motor. And uh, so that's going to get plugged in, so that'll be our ground. It's really nice and quiet just by hand. Uh, we'll have to see how it works when we put it in the bathroom. Don't forget to plug in the plug. Now I'll flip on the switch and see how she works. It's nice and quiet with excellent air movement. I go on. <laughs> goes up. There you go. It's way easier when you're up higher. Okay, so is it straight? I think it is. If it is, it's just dumb luck. It's straight enough. Huh. Yeah. Like dumb it's luck. Good luck. Like Let's, go yeah. huh? Let's go with that luck. Let's go with that luck. Dumb luck. Okay, there it is. That's yeah. the quietest I can remember. Like since yeah, it wasn't that quiet before. Since it was brand new, you know. Wow. Yeah, it wasn't that quiet at all before. <laughs> It yeah, made, it made no the noise like, like it was going to break, I think. Yeah, you, you feel it here too. Yeah. And here is the paper test. I'll put links in my video description for the Klein 15-in-1 ratcheting screwdriver, the Kinepex electrical installation tool, and I'll put a link for a Brone Newtone bath fan that has the fan, a light, 
and a heater. Thanks. I hope this video was helpful.